Good morning, everyone. It is December 22nd. Uh, I'm Bob Ravenscroft, Vice President for Advancement, here for our uh, daily press briefing. We'll go through some numbers and then answer some pre-submitted questions on vaccinations and, and uh, blood supply. So as you can see from, from the chart, um, we currently have 74 uh, patients in-house that are COVID or um, still infectious. Uh, 53 of the of these 74 patients are are positive and then the remaining are no longer uh, infectious. Actually, I take that back, it's 55 and then the remainder are no longer infectious. Um, what you can see on the next slide, um, the number of patients currently on ventilators is now at 10. 13 of these patients are in the ICU and then you can see where the, the, the rest of them break down. Okay, go to the next one, Jeff, real quick. Um, you can see uh, it's 50-50 split right now, Lancaster County and uh, those from outside of Lancaster County, uh, still a wide geographic spread, um, but we really applaud what's going on in the rural communities of, of tempering things um, and blunting the spread out there. Okay, Jeff, go, to, go ahead and go to the next one and you can see um, things continue to tick up there, very somber for us as we approach the holidays when you see this. Detailed statistics will be sent to the media as, as usual. Okay, first uh, question uh, that we had, uh, lots of questions around vaccinations. What I would say is our vaccinations have gone exceedingly well. We're, uh, we're reading and hearing through our network of a lot of issues throughout the country that frankly just have not been experienced here. And it's a hats off to the team and all of their pre-planning um, to move forward and do this efficiently and, uh, and as rapidly as possible. So far, 2,743 of our employees and providers have received their first dose. Again, um, Bryan employees are in what is called uh, the 1A tier. There are three tiers at Bryan within 1A, and wave one is essentially complete, and we're beginning to work our way through the second wave. Um, Wednesday evening, we'll be out of uh, vaccinations until additional allocations are, are received here. Um, we really don't know when that will occur. It's a very fluid situation. It's gone from uh, thinking we get uh, all of uh, Pfizer to cover our 1A, that amount has decreased a little bit, and then there's some uncertainty around the next shipment of, Vi of Pfizer's vaccine. Moderna, as you know, is, is making its way through the state, and now you know we're hearing that, well, we might get some Moderna when we were originally slated to just get uh, Pfizer, arrival date unknown. So what the team now is doing is rebuilding some of the uh, systems so we could um, that we use to administer the Pfizer vaccine to the Moderna one so we can track employees to know which one we get. So, you know, it again, it's a very fluid situation. Uh, kind of the moral of the story is we've worked through our, our plan very efficiently and we will be out on Wednesday evening and we have made it through a little bit of our, our second wave of employees. Overall, 69% uh, of our providers that are in wave one and two have been vaccinated. Um, we do believe this is higher because some providers had the option to get um, their vaccination at St. Elizabeth's. I would encourage the media to ask them the specific questions on what they've done with providers in the community. We do know that over 90% of the eligible providers uh, that are, I'd say, more Bryan-centric, either by employment contracts with their private practice, are employed physicians, or the surgeons or specialists that predominantly practice here, even though they have privileges at both. Um, over 90% of them have uh, already received their vaccination. 75% of our employees that were eligible to receive this in wave one and those, you know, that little bit of wave two have received their first dose. Um, the remainder of our allocated vaccination or vaccines will be used for them uh, for today and then into tomorrow. Um, the, really the ones what we're finding that have not got that, they're not eligible due to uh, currently they're pregnant. They've had a recent COVID exposure, and, and of course, there's probably a few other reasons, but we are thrilled to know that we're over 90% of our primary providers here at Bryan, and well over 75% of our employees have jumped on this, exp um, this um, opportunity. I think really we're, we're trying to temper expectations. Uh, there's so much that is even out of our control. Uh, we will continue to work through the process as efficiently as possible but we are dependent upon when we get our next allocations from uh, the state of Nebraska. Um, I think that covers everything with vaccine. All going well, we're waiting. Um, at, I guess one other thing, we've been asked a lot about uh, public administration of that. 
currently we're not slated to do that except they know we're ready and willing to help so um, I know a lot of people are calling to ask if they can get in the lineup here at Bryan. All we have been allocated is for our 1A, you know, group tier 1, 1A, um, which covers our employees. That's the only allocations we've received here. However, um, please watch this information closely. It's going to continue to roll out all through the spring. And when there is information or our ability to extend uh, vaccination opportunities beyond our employees or physicians, we will communicate that immediately. Uh, there was a question on uh, blood um, that I guess there's a rumor out there that, that surgeries are being canceled because of a blood shortage. Um, first, there absolutely is a, a blood shortage, so I would encourage everyone to go to the, to the blood bank's website and sign up if you, you would like to give blood. Um, reasons are obvious. We've shared up here before um, because of COVID, the amount of people giving blood has gone down. So we have not been canceling surgeries because of that. However, it is fair to say we are looking really closely at all surgeries that are getting scheduled and their blood usage and monitoring that closely. So to answer the question, no, we've not canceled. Yes, we are watching very closely. Yes, uh, we indeed have seen a decrease in that. And in fact, we're evaluating the long-term uh, need for our, our drive through clinic. It is slated to go through the early part of January. Um, and I think it's a really positive thing. There is certainly, if you think back at the very beginning of this, we were the first to um, you know, really offer a drive through option in the state. And we're very early, I don't say necessarily say adopters, but we were you know, very prevalent and uh, prominent in early testing. So many testing opportunities have uh, been developed. We're catching up as a society. So I think it's a combination of a couple of things, Matt. One, the spread is a, you know, been blunted a little bit here. So not as many people are getting uh, tested or need to. And at the same time, there are a plethora of other options that are so incredibly welcomed. We're going to watch that closely to see if we back down our drive through or continue it. It's, it's an open question at this point. There was a, I saw something broke in the journal Star. There's, I know going to be a formal announcement coming out later that uh, Chief Blymeister is uh, choosing to go into the private sector. And yes, it's a, a role at, at Bryan Health and he will be our new safety and security manager. We are thrilled to have him here. I know it's a, in a way a loss for the city. He's been an incredible public servant at his time with the sheriff's office and then uh, leading uh, LPD. Uh, but I'm confident they'll find a great person and we are thrilled to have him here working on, on safety and security issues across our, our campuses here in Lincoln. So safety and security manager will be uh, Jeff's title here at Bryan. I don't have an explanation for it. I think uh, our sense was around uh, Thanksgiving um, you know, at first we thought perhaps it was because of the holidays, there were less people actually going in to get tested. I think what we've seen is there was actually very good things happening in our community and not as many people feeling ill. Um, honestly, I think a big part of that could be there was a huge chunk of our population that has exited the city as college kids have gone home is probably a factor in it. But you make an excellent point here that the positivity rate is still very, very high. So this is a very live and active virus out there. And if you go back to early, you know, early May, late April, a 28% positivity rank, you know, rating would have sent shivers down all of our spines. So there has been so much good news with the vaccination and it's been you know borderline euphoric at times in the in the past week here and i know the community gets uh, wrapped up in that as well but it is really not the time to let our guard down uh, the vaccination rollout as you can you know hear from what i just shared it's going to be a prolonged thing over over several months you know i think we have to plan as a society through the first half of the year we're going to be dealing with vaccinations so that means remaining diligent with uh, with masking uh, your good hand hygiene and being very careful of who you uh, interact with in close quarters 
is going to be vitally important for, for some time because we do not want to see this go the other way. You know, we've creeped up just a smidge. I mean, after a, a pretty dramatic drop over the you know, previous couple of weeks. Um, so we're not out of the woods on this by any stretch of the imagination. So uh, this is not based on data, but my guess is uh, it's a lot of the college students leaving town and some good safety measures being practiced by the community that is driving testing rate down. But as you can see, uh, the, the rate of infection is high for those that aren't feeling well and are getting tested.